peace that passes all understanding for each person here, Father. Father, we just want you to know that you are always welcome here. And we love you and we praise you and we worship you in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Needless to say, this has been a rough couple of weeks. About, about three, hasn't it? Something around there. Had, had a person tell me one time that, you know, if everything's going great and the devil's not bothering you, maybe you need to look at your whole card, <coughs> see what's going on. Well, we must be doing something. Must be doing something right, because the devil's sure been giving us fits the last three or four weeks. So, how do we deal with it? We stomp him. We cry. We pray. We cry some more. And. Then we cry some more. It's going to get better. I said this three weeks ago. We're gonna, and I'm going to say it again, and I'll probably keep saying it. We're going to be a whole lot stronger out the other side of this than we were going in. Because what doesn't destroys us, destroy us makes us stronger. Amen? What doesn't defeat us makes us stronger. The Bible tells us, and, and I'm getting way ahead of myself here, but that's okay. James chapter 1. Not where I plan on starting today, but that's okay. We're going to follow the Holy Spirit, right? Amen. And chapter, chapter 1 and verse 13. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by evil. Nor does he himself. No, wait a minute. I, boy, I really messed it up. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. Left out one full line there. For God cannot be tempted by evil. Nor does he himself tempt anyone. So, when we're tempted and we're tried and we're running through the, the proverbial ringer, we're not to say that God has put this on me. Because God, number one, doesn't tempt anybody with evil. He don't make you sick to make you a better Christian. He don't put disease and stuff on you to make you a better person. Now he can allow, as we talked a little bit last week with Job, he can allow things to happen. But sometimes he allows the really bad things to happen to those who are the strongest. Just like Job. The devil went before God and says the only reason Job is who he is is because you have blessed everything he's touched and you have put a hedge of protection around him that nobody can get through. You lift that hedge up and you just give me a shot at him. And I guarantee you he will curse you to your face. And God says, okay. I'll play your silly little game. You can do anything to Job you want to do to him, but you cannot touch his life. And boy, it was like a lightning flash. The devil was out of heaven and he was on his way. 
He caused an earthquake to collapse the house where all of Job's kids were at, killed all of his kids. His enemy come in and stole all of his flocks. His neighbors got mad at him, burned all of his crops. He went from the wealthiest man to the poorest man in what I would say probably a span of about seven days. He went from having it all to having nothing. But he did not curse God. He didn't listen to his wife. You know, they even put boils on him. You know, Satan come back a little bit later and says, well, yeah, you know, but you still wouldn't let me touch him. You let me do some things to him. He said, okay, you can, you can, you can try him, but you can't kill him. So he put boils and he did all this kind of stuff to, to Job. And Job still worshipped God. He still didn't curse the Lord. He stayed the course. He stayed strong. And at the end of it, we, as we read in, in chapter 43 last year, God gave Job twice what he had had before. He had 1,000 camels and he had 2,000 now. You know, he had 1,500 oxen he had 3,000 oxen. God doubled what he had. He even gave him another house full of kids in his old age. And Job lived to see his grandkids grow up. Proverbs chapter 4. Got off my soapbox now. We'll get into the message. In verse 20. How, how do we... How do we... Know... What God has planned for us. How do we, how do we, when we have something catastrophic happen, how do we know that God is going to take care of us? It's in His Word. And that's what the, the writer of, of Proverbs is telling us, and I believe it was Solomon. It says in verse, chapter 4, verse 20, My son, give attention to my words. In other words, listen to God's Word. Listen to what God is telling us. And we know God is speaking to us through His Word. And His words are not our words. Trust me. Neither are His thoughts our thoughts. Give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. We've got to keep this in front of us day in and day out. We've got to stay in this Word. We've got to study this Word. We've, that way, when something happens, we know. The Holy Spirit can bring it up and say, Oh, you need to look at this verse. By His stripes, you were healed. If you don't, haven't read it, you haven't studied it, you don't know it's there, the Holy Spirit can't bring it back up. To, you know, that's what His job is, to bring us to scriptures that say, that will cover whatever situation we're in. When we've got a friend that is, the doctors have written off, we can stand on His Word that says, Jesus Christ died for that sickness 2,000 years ago. He can even open prison doors and let people out. He's done it. They had already written Peter off. Herod seen how glad it made the Jews when he killed Jesus' brother James. He went ahead and locked Peter up and says, Tomorrow we're going we're gonna to bring you out and we're going to run you through with a sword. Peter was so worked up that night. You know what he did? He laid down and went to sleep. The angel come into his cell and said, Get up, Peter. Time to get out of here. He finally had to walk up and kick him in the side and say, Get up and get dressed. We got to go.
Paul and Silas in the middle of the prison in, the, in Philippi. They put them in the deepest, darkest part of the dungeon and stood guards around them. And what happened? There came an earthquake. Imagine that. What were they doing? They were singing and praising God in the middle of the night, locked up in stocks, had been beat within an inch of their life, and they're singing and praising God, and the earthquake comes, and not a single prisoner left. The jailer come down... He was ready to kill himself because he just knew all the gates were open. Everybody was gone. And it was his responsibility. He was responsible for them. And everyone was still there. Paul said, don't hurt yourself. Don't do that. We're all still here. He brought a light in and sure enough, they were all still there. God can do miracles. He is still a miracle working God. He hasn't changed. The Bible says He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He don't change. So what changes? What allows all this garbage to happen? We do. We mess up. We open the door to the devil. And he throws stuff at us. Because God allows him to because God knows we can take it. Just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they throwed them into the fiery furnace. Everybody standing there expected them to go poof and burn to a crisp. The only thing that went poof was the ropes that had them tied up. The king walked up, looked down in there, and he said, we just throw three guys in there? And they said, yeah. He says, uh, then how come there's four of them walking around in the middle of the fire? That's a pretty serious situation to be in. They're going to throw you in a fire? And you go, okay. You know what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego told the king right before they throwed him into the fire? They wouldn't bow down and worship the king's image. And the king said, give him an extra chance. Give him another chance. Says, if, if you will do this, then I won't have to tie you up and throw you in a fire. I really don't want to throw you in there because I really like you guys. You're, you know, The king really liked them. He didn't want to do it. But he had made that decree and he had to stand behind it. And they said, O king, live forever. Our God is able to protect us. But if He doesn't, know this. We will never bow and worship your image. They give the king the respect by saying, O king, live forever. But they were not about to bow. And they told him straight up, our God is able to protect us. But if he don't, we're still not going to bow down and worship you. And they throwed him in. The fire was so hot that the soldiers that were taking him to throw him in were killed by the heat. And they stumbled and fell into the furnace. I often wondered how they could have stumbled and fell into the furnace. Because, you know, it always shows them throwing them into the, the side. They were going to drop them in the top. That's how they stumbled and fell. They fell in this big hole in the top of the furnace. And Jesus Christ himself met them in that fire. Their ropes burned off. They didn't. When they come out of that fire, they didn't even smell like smoke. He protected them. He will do that for us today. Incline thy, your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them. And they are health to all their flesh. The literal Hebrew word for health is medicine. This word is medicine. 
to anything that ails you. It's covered by the blood and stripes of Jesus Christ. Proverbs chapter 3 in verse 5. This is another way we get from God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. We don't always understand what's going on or why it's going on. We have to trust in the Lord. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. So no matter what is happening, no matter what the doctors have said, no matter what the doctors have said, no matter what the doctors have said, we lean on God. We don't always understand it. But God knows everything. I heard, I heard a minister last night. It was, it was awesome. I thought, man, this will preach. You know, God has never said, it just occurred to me. Or, I just thought of that. God's never said that. He knows it all. And nothing, absolutely nothing surprises him. He never, God has never said, whoa, I didn't see that one coming. Amen? God knows everything. He knows what we need. He knows what we want even before we can think about it. It says before you even think or ask or ask or think. He knows. He knows what the devil's trying to do to her. He knows what the devil's trying to do to you and your friend and your dad and your dad. He knows. It wasn't a surprise to him. But he knows also that you put your trust in him and in his word. He knows that. Your dad's back wasn't a surprise to God. But he knows how to fix it. This wasn't a surprise to God. He knows how to fix it. And it's time, Starla and I were talking about this a little bit earlier after practice this morning. It's time. Can I use the story? They just bought a bull a couple years ago. And you usually keep a bull about five or six years. And then you have to try to... This bull they've had for two years. And they paid good money for this bull. He got sick the other day. And ended up having to put him down. And she said, you know, it's happened before. And we just, you know, go buy another bull and keep right on going. But she said, you know, I got mad the other day. And I said, devil, you took that bull from us. Three years, we're not going to get from that bull. You owe us seven times what we would have got from that bull. The Bible says that when a thief is caught, he is to repay seven times what he stole. Jesus calls the devil a liar and a thief. He's a liar. He couldn't tell the truth if his life depended on it. He, if the sun's shining, he'd tell you it's dark and rainy. He don't know how to tell the truth. He's a liar and a thief. And it's time we got mad and quit taking it. So many times we just... Uh, God, I don't understand it, but your will be done. God's will is for us to be healed. God's will is for us to be well. God's will is for our livestock not to die. 
before their time? Or our people die before their time? And it's time we got mad at the devil and quit getting mad at God. It's not God's fault. God, we just read in Hebrews, God can tempt no one. All of this junk comes from the devil. And it's time we got mad at him and put him in his place and put God back in his place. And quit putting the devil in the place of God and believing the devil more than we can believe God. This word is truth. It is life. It is medicine to our bodies. We have got to get into God's word and believe what God said. My favorite two verses of Scripture, Mark 11, 23 and 24. If you say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and do not doubt. So many times when we pray, we always add that little, if it be thy will, at the end of it. And that just negated everything we prayed for. It is God's will. He sent His Son to die on the cross 2,000 years ago for our sins, for our sickness, for our disease, for our pain and our suffering. Jesus took every bit of it to the cross. We don't have to be sick. We don't have to be in need. We don't have to be hurting. All we got to do is put it at the feet of Jesus. Just like the song said. We lay our crowns. We lay our needs. We lay our desires at the feet of Jesus. And He will answer. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter 12. Verse 1. Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so a great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. Lay aside every weight. What's weighing you down today? Lay it aside. Lay it at Jesus' feet. Let Him carry it. Jesus said, my burden is light. Take that weight off. Lay it at Jesus' feet. Let him have it. And the sin that so easily ensnares. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. We all have a race to run. We ain't to the end yet. We ain't to the finish line yet. Because it tells us here, let us run with endurance. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus came, took our sin, our sickness, our disease. Voluntarily took it. Nobody made him do it. He volunteered for the job. And he is sitting at the right hand of God. And he is holding a place for each and every one of you. He is holding a place. He has built a house especially for you. Our tickets are bought and paid for. Our ticket was bought and paid for before God ever created this world. Jesus paid the price 2,000 years ago. 
and we don't have to take it anymore, and we're not going to take it anymore. Amen. It's time we put the devil in his place and let the world know that we serve a mighty, mighty God. And the testimonies that are coming, going to be coming out of this little church to this community and the world are going to blow people's socks off. They are not going to believe what God is going to do through this church. Amen. Father, I thank you for this word. Father, I just, right now, we come against the powers of darkness over this church, over this church family, over this community. We bind Satan and cast him out and command him to get his hands off this community and take his cancer and his kidney disease and his diabetes and everything with him when he goes it has no place here this community belongs to Jesus Christ and to God Almighty and we are going to stand firm on that and claim it from now till Jesus comes Satan your days in Sealing Oklahoma and in Crossroads Community Church are over they're not numbered. They're over. You are defeated. Jesus went to your house 2,000 years ago and kicked your fanny in your own front yard. And you don't belong here. And we command you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, to leave and to never return. And Father, we give you praise and glory and honor in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. 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 We're going to put the Christmas tree up. What we need to do is we need to kind of stack those chairs right there. And...